What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Nina. And of course, I've talked to you all about my 100 pound weight loss and keeping it off all these years. But one of the biggest things that I get asked about are what are some of those habits I had to give up? More specifically, how did I maintain those changes while being busy AF? So today I'm talking all about the six habits I gave up to lose 100 pounds while being busy AF. <laughs> Stopping with the binge eating, the overeating, the cravings, all of that. And I want to make sure I share share a lot of those things with you today. Make sure that you join my free text community as well so that you can stay in the know as to when I post and when I'm going live on other platforms. And also make sure you check the description box for all items that I mentioned today. Let's get into this video. To be honest, my relationship with food in the past was trash. I had to stop restricting myself way too much and build a better relationship with food. Y'all, I used to walk around like starving Marvin out here, like living some days on as low as 600 calories without a fasting routine. I learned over time that many diets say that they are a quick fix, but they involve changing your eating big time with something you can't keep up for the rest of your life. I'm talking like cutting full food groups by 100% or only living off juice, and this is often not supposed supported by nutritional science. While reducing my calories is great for me, I learned that the food that you eat to build your calories is the most important. So a slow and steady approach to weight loss can help to reduce the risk of cravings and binge eating. Those quick fixes actually lead to a lot of food cravings on the other hand. So to get in that fat burning mode, I eat high levels of protein, fiber, and healthy fats at every meal. And I like to reduce refined sugars and a lot of extra carbohydrates. My goal is to be responsible respectfully full and not hungry, which can lead to an all out smackdown on whatever's around. I had to stop eating by the clock and eat more intuitively. So hear me out. Though I'm an intermittent faster during my eating blocks, I still listen to my body and eat often. And this keeps my metabolism going. This also keeps me from eating like a bottomless pit when I get a hold of any food. So I had to plan out regular meals and snacks to be successful. And intuitive eating means eating when you feel hungry and stopping once you're full. And I had to relearn this because I used to use food to provide me with comfort and distraction. Click like if you can relate. I started to pay attention to my hunger cues and eat only when I was hungry and I no longer call food good or bad. So let's go ahead and keep it a book. Fiber fills you up by slowing digestion and protein suppresses the hormones that tells the brain that you're hungry. And the right carbs like from veggies and brown rice give your body good fuel. There's principles to intuitive eating and they include things like rejecting diets and honoring your hunger but making peace with food and challenging food police like the people that tell you what to eat and when and also discovering the satisfaction factor to avoid overeating and consciously feeling your fullness and coping with emotions with kindness that you have and also respecting our bodies and involving movement in our practice while honoring our health with gentle nutrition and things that do us well so we can be more successful. I had to stop skipping meals and snacks and allow myself some of the foods I really enjoy. I would skip meals off Often, which would lead to acts of overeating and I would leave my body desperate for nutrients so I would be looking in all the wrong convenient places for things to eat. Regular eating patterns reduce the chances of binge eating later in your day and I ain't ashamed. Remember y'all I came from being that person that would roll through Wendy's drive through sometimes twice a day and I found it was because my body wasn't getting what it needed. For my first meal I jumpstart my metabolism with high protein that includes things like eggs, almonds, chicken breasts, oats, and Greek yogurt. To maintain metabolism and energy levels, I eat meals spaced around three to four hours apart. Skipping those meals can lead to dips in energy levels that promote binge eating. So I also like to give myself a meal or two a week that might be a little richer and outside my normal diet. This keeps eating interesting and enjoyable, which makes it less likely that I'll overeat food that I restrict heavily. So I gotta treat myself. Y'all, I get introduced to a lot of new foods through meals I make with HelloFresh, who I'm happy to say is the sponsor of today's video. HelloFresh recipes that feature produce that goes from the farm to your front door in under a week so you can savor summer flavors right from home. They offer a wide variety of quick and easy recipes that minimize prep and make cleanup so easy and it's up to 72% cheaper than dining in restaurants or grocery shopping. I absolutely love that and HelloFresh offers veggie, pescatarian, and fit and wholesome meals to make it easy to stick with your goals and me and hubby we enjoy some of the same things but we enjoy some differences so this keeps it 
HelloFresh. <laughs> HelloFresh recipes include pre-portioned ingredients that mean less prep for you and less wasted food. So go to HelloFresh.com and use code DrNina16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Again, go to HelloFresh.com and use code DrNina16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. I also had to figure out my triggers and find alternatives. And for me, therapy was a big one here. So it was a lot of pure learning and knowing more about what pushes me to overeat helps me manage those triggers. I made a note of the foods I binged on without being hungry. So things that I would bring in the house that I knew I didn't need around or what I would overeat. And I found some foods were connected to my emotions, social settings, and even people I was around at the time. But I had to find alternatives to those situations like exercise or spending time planning for things or even self-care, which makes me remember the importance of treating myself well. So doing the opposite of what your trigger is often helps these situations. I had to straight up stop trying to outrun a bad diet. Have you ever said, I just did a long workout, I deserve to eat what I want? Well, I know I have, and this truly turned into binge eating and giving into cravings. I would overestimate all the time how many calories I had burned exercising since calorie trackers aren't always accurate. And then I would eat back the calories, which was very depressing. So the cycle continued. What I learned is exercise is only half the battle. I need good fuel to get through workouts. And I said, good fuel. That's the key word. Fried foods, heavy carbs, and drinking my calories led to weight gain no matter how much I exercised. And that also meant not skipping my sleep in order to exercise because I used to do that as well. Now this led to stress and late nights which led to more overeating and giving into cravings. So the more you treat your body well, get some rest, also work out and balance that with a healthy diet, the more you'll win every time. As if y'all didn't know, I absolutely love food and I've gained a lot more self-control around food, but I had to stop putting myself around unhealthy foods and sugars to reduce my cravings. So this one was a no-brainer, but I had to make some common sense adjustments, some things we don't necessarily think about. Y'all know that I drink a whole lot of water, almost a gallon a day, but mainly because I've tricked myself into doing it and this helps me to reduce cravings and my high level appetite. It even includes tea for me as well. Like if I'm drinking tea, that feels the same way and same fulfilling feeling as drinking water straight up. And what I like about it is sometimes I'm finding that I'm more thirsty than I am hungry. So I also feel less guilty indulging in some tea or, you know, a lot of water that just helped me feel a lot better. And I'm also eating more protein and this reduces my desire to snack all over the place. So I do protein shakes. I also just increase my proteins at lunch and dinner. And I also try mind tricks. So chewing gum, taking a shower, or doing yard work and managing my stress levels because the more stressed I am, the more I eat and the more I gain weight. So y'all, I hope you learned a thing or two today about my six habits that I gave up to lose 100 pounds while being busy AF. Make sure that you comment, share this video with someone who can use it and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching y'all. Beautiful brown baby doll. Peace. Check the links in the description for my free new Dr. Nina's Mentorship Facebook group, which is a group of like-minded individuals looking to progress, grow, and support one another along the way. The Now That's Life podcast is about to go into season two, so I suggest you go ahead and subscribe to the podcast on all your major podcasting platforms. All descriptions and links for that and my free Supernatural video course are found below. Thanks so much for all the love and support over on my new website. If you haven't already, go ahead and check it out and join me for new ways to interact with me, giveaways and prizes, weekly emails, as well as my free eight day supernatural video course, which is free when you sign up.